Hi there, everyone. Today we are going to be uh, doing a part four of the Blender tutorial series. And we are going to be working over here inside this tab. Um, and quite possibly we might go on into some of these other tabs. Um, I'm not going to explain these tabs in super, super high detail. Um, in this tutorial, I'm just going to go over them and tell you what they are and stuff like that. Uh, the reason for that is, is because I think it's better to um, explain a lot of the technicalities and stuff like that. Why, uh, why we're doing stuff. Um, that way you can better understand them. And um, get used to using them. But I will go over them now. But alrighty, so. Over here, you got your tabs. We got our render tab. And if you notice, you'll see this little box that pops up and it'll tell you a little description of what they are. Um, they're not super in depth or, or anything like that, but they just tell you what they are. And uh, this one with the camera is the render tab. And then if you go over here, the next one, it's it'll tell you that it's the render layers tab. And then you got your scene tab and then your world tab. Then your object tab, uh, and then your uh, object strength tab, your modifiers, your uh, for your vertex and your data groups, materials, textures, particle systems, and then your physics. Um, to go in brief detail about the render layers. Um, Let's see, I just set something up real super fast. Come over to your light tab, and you'll see that every time I click on something, these will change uh, over here. So we got camera, and then your camera will hi hi highlight, and then you'll get your camera properties. Then you go to your light, you'll get your light properties. Uh, then you go back to your object, and then it goes back to the object data tab. And over here in your light, um, this is where you change your lights from point, sun, spot, hemi, and area lights. Um, I change the sun. I tend to use the sun a lot because sun, um, it don't matter where this light is. A sun lamp is a sun, so it's going to, it's going to light up your whole scene um, compared to a spot. Spot lamp just hi highlights that area um, in this view. Here. Then you got a Hemi, and your Hemi only um, brings out light from these areas over here. Then you got an area light, and just a small area. Then you got your point light, and your point light, um, they're weakest, and a lot of people use them, um, but you have to use a bunch of them to, to light up a little scene. Um, which I do use all of these, but the most common one that I use is the sun lamp. And I, I, I'm always in cycles render, renderer, sorry, nowadays, instead of blender render. Um, the blender internal renderer is, uh, is super nice and stuff like that, but it don't have uh, GPU support and stuff like that. And renders tend to take a lot longer. And I like cycles renderer because you could come over here and if you go into your file user preferences and you go under uh, system and you could uh, this compute device you could enable CUDA and however many uh, GPUs you have in there or whatever you could enable them I got the 750 Ti for now I plan on upgrading sometime in the future but anyways you enable it here and if you want to keep it on all the time everything that you do in the user preferences um, after you get done doing it always click save user settings that way when you start it back up you don't have to go back into the user settings to change it and then over here under the render um, tab here you'll have the device you just change it to GPU compute and now it's going to use your GPU instead of your CPU I am pressing my number keypad now, uh, here's another thing. If you're on a laptop and you don't have a number keypad, you could go over to, uh, where is it, input, and tick on emulate numpad. And if you're on a laptop, 
that will turn your number keys on your laptop into the, the numpad uh, like you get on a desktop. Um, so you just want to tick that and then you could use the, the number keys um, for that. So if you're using the Pi menus, if you're following along with me, you press Q to go to the top and then we'll want to go to the right. And then this is how I line my light up all the time. Oops. And we want to go to the front. And then back to the top to make sure. And this, I'm just lining this light up because um, that's the way I want the light to shine in and it'll show the shadows and, and stuff like that. Um, I'm just setting this up really fast. So control alt zero lines your camera up into the view for you. That way you don't have to mess with any of that. And then within, with these properties open, I always click lock camera to view to line my camera up. And then we'll just do something like that. And then I'll untick it. Um, that way I can zoom in and get a closer look. And then if you press Z on your keyboard, that brings up your, um, uh, your view options. So we got rendered, wireframe, uh, shade flat, solid, shade smooth, material, uh, and then rendered. Then as you can see, I pointed that light towards that away and you'll see that the back shadow is down here and the light is coming in from this area. So if we go back over to the lights with this, uh, with the light uh, clicked on, You'll click use nodes. Oh, I'm in cycles right now. Um, and then you'll just want to, you could up to strength right here where it says strength. So now we got a strength of five. So if I go back to Z, back to solid, and then if I press zero on my num keypad, or if you press uh, Z and then press camera, Z and camera, you'll get out of there. Um, go shift A mesh add a plane and then i'll press s for scale and press zero again and then let's go to rendered and then let's add a new material to this and let's call it floor and right here is where you change the color of it Just make it a gray for now. And anyways, I just wanted to line up a simple scene. Let's go back to render. So we're back into the render tab. So if I press Z and go back to solid and then Z and then, uh, yeah, solid. And then press Q and then go to camera out of there. Anyways, um, so we have a, just a small little scene here set up. So we're going to go over the render tabs. Now, um, important thing is uh, your materials. Blender render does not work. Uh, materials does not work with cycles render. You can switch over to the cycles renderer, and but your materials will no longer work, and you have to click on use nodes, just like this, because that was a material from Blender render when we first started. And, um, and if we had up here, you'll see these little, uh, in this corner, you see like these little lines and like a triangle shape. If you grab this and pull that out, it'll split your view. And then you come down here, uh, actually over here, I'm going to use this side and this is you where you change to, um, your different editors, uh, and you come click on node editor. And a lot of people, that's the reason why a lot of people um, kind of shy away from uh, cycles is because it is a node-based um, system. But after you play around with them and stuff uh, and get used to them, uh, they, they turn out pretty simple. And you'll notice that uh, with the render time difference and stuff like that, uh, you'll notice why everybody hypes. Uh, cycles up so much. I'm just going to press N and T to close these two windows real quick to get more area over here. But anyways, so you'll have to come in here and if you have any uh, 
textures that's got any images you'll have to come in here and press shift a and you'll have to load all them up i'm not going to get into that right now um but if you want to close a window you'll go back up here to one of these corners and you'll grab it and you could pull it that way and you'll see an arrow light up to move it that way or you can move it back that way to close this one just like that and um all righty so we're into the render tab and we got presets so they got a hd 1080p dvc pro um the hd tv 1080p 720 and so on and so forth and it, you just click on one of those presets and it'll set all these presets up right down here for you um another thing i do when i'm in cycles is i just press circle or sorry zero to get in here Another thing I do is um, when I do the live preview render, um, I go over here and I press on border. And now all you get that's rendering is what's inside your bounding box here. And uh, it's just a lot easier on your computer and stuff like that. Um, and it's not rendering the whole thing. So you, this is right here where it says resolution. This is where you change the size of this bounding box. And in turns will um, it will equal out to the size of your image or the size of uh, resolution of your animation. Um, this right here, fifty percent. That just means the percentage scale of render resolution. So right now, if I go to Z and go back to solid, right now, if I came up here and I clicked on render, the render size of this image is not going to be 1920 by 1080. It's going to be half that size. Um, so that is another thing that you need to uh, keep in mind because uh, by default, I believe this is set on 50%. Um, so if you're going in there and you're messing around and going to render an image and then you render this out and say you like this, if you come down here to image down here, this is where you come and you save it and you save it as an image click on here and go in here and save it somewhere. Um, I just save it to that desktop and just uh, put, uh, I don't know, test and then come up here and save as image. So just be careful when you go to render out your full uh, right now, I would suggest keeping it on 50 or even 25%, especially if you got a lot going and it takes um, a super long amount, you press F12 and that'll take, that'll take you straight into the render or to render for you instead of coming up here. Um, but anyways, if it, you got a lot of particle systems and stuff like that, you could even drop it down to 25% and it'll be 25% of 1920 by 1080. Um, just remember when you go to do a full render, you just come in here and you just move it up to 100%. And another thing, when you're on your CPU or your GPU, you come down here to your... Um, performance down here and normally for cpu the 64 by 64 tile size that's what you want for cpu because you don't want to go too high because it'll push your processor too much and it just it just uh and it won't give you good results so i'd leave it on this um or even go to 72 by 72 um but for your gpu i always put it on 256 by 256 and that's the tiles um Go ahead and put this back on 50%. Um, that's the size of the render tiles. So if I press F12 again, you see how the render tiles are bigger. Maybe I should have left it on 100%. You see how they were bigger and you see how it was rendering faster uh, instead of with them little blocks and you get the same, same result. So, we got the dimensions down um, over here. This is your frame range. Right now we got one to 250. We can raise that up to 500 if you want. And you'll see down here, if we zoom out with your middle mouse button or zoom in, it'll zoom you in. Um, and then hold middle mouse button to move it. You'll see that we're on frame 500 now. So if I put this back to 250, you'll see that it goes down to 250. And that's what these are down here too. You can lower it or raise it down here too. Um, and this is for animation. 
Uh, then you got your frame rate. They got all the way up to 60, or you can do your custom. Uh, I don't never go past uh, 30 frames per second. I haven't went up to 60. Um, and to be honest, I don't know how well that would work with uh, Blender. I don't know. But the option is there. Um, then you got your stamp. Um, you got text colors and stuff like that. Font size, text color. Um, alrighty. So it'll stamp the file, which is untitled, um, the date that it was rendered, uh, the render time that it took. It took six seconds to render that. Uh, you got your scene name down here, your camera, your frame, and your time code. So if you're doing test renders and stuff like that, uh, we could raise the font size up there a little bit and you change your text color and over here you could uh, put the lens in there the marker sequence strip um, a note uh, this is a note if I could spell right move that out of the way space is a note Alrighty, F12. And you'll see that it, it raised up bigger. You got your file size and stuff that I just showed you. Um, and I put a note in there. Oh, there it is. This is a note. So um, if you're rendering out scenes and you're working in a group and stuff like that, uh, this could be a good thing to use. I don't ever use it, so. You got your output, so this is where you could output your files to. Um, I'd suggest before you render to go and put this somewhere. Um, we'll go to tutorials and just we'll set accept. And um, now you got this overwrite ticked. So if you got this over here and you're doing a PNG or a JPEG, you're doing an image sequence and let's say you're rendering and uh, you rendered it all out and you didn't like it and you changed it and then you rendered the anim animation out again. Um, the overwrite will just overwrite the previous files. So um, that's pretty good. You got your placeholders, cache results. Um, it saves all that stuff out. Um, this is BW for black and white, RGB for red, green, blue, uh, RGBA is our, uh, red, green, blue, alpha. Then you got your color depth, 8, 16. I always set mine to 16 and I set my compression to 90. That's if I'm using, um, PNG. And then you got freestyle. So if I turn that on and we press exit and we come back here, uh, let's see. Yeah, I like that. That was fine. We could have stayed in there. Um, freestyle is the the NPR renderer, and it renders. I'll just show you real quick. So I got this turned on, and I'll just show you. So, and I'm gonna put this back down to fifty percent. Um, so you see that we turned the freestyle on and now you see you get them nice lines um, around these to make it look like a 2D image. So that's pretty nice. Uh, and freestyle is pretty cool and pretty useful. But I'm going to turn it off for now. Uh, sampling. You got your sampling presets final preview. Um, that changes all these down here. So if you go to sampling, you go to final, it'll tick. Uh, It'll take uh, squared samples, and I think this, yeah, it'll leave it on path tracing, but it'll set these seeds this uh, and this render and everything up for you here. Um, clamp direct and clamp indirect. This is for lighting, um, and I'll go into this more and more because when we start modeling and we get uh, glossy textures and stuff like that going, you'll see that um, you'll get more and more fireflies once you do that. 
So let's see here. We got volume sam sampling. The hit hit tour. <laughs> Anyways, I'm not going to pronounce that. Um, we got the, the light pass. This is where you change all your light pass for diffuse, glossy, transmission, volume, um, motion blur. Your film. This is where if you want the background to be transparent and you don't want this gray background in there, you just tick on that. Press F12 and now you have transparency. Uh, performance. We went over that. You could uh, The threads is for your uh, GPU tech threads. Uh, this fixed is you can move them yourself, tiles, you got dynamic BVH for the viewports, you can do static, um, the start resolution 64, uh, you can take all this, this progressive refine, this is normally what I use, um, like say if I'm messing with something and then I want it to render all night while I'm asleep, I'll click on this progressive refine. And then I'll go up here to your sampling. And right here, this is where you change your render. Um, I'll set this to something crazy like 40,000. And I'll just let it render all night. Um, this preview right here. So if I press exit and go back in to uh, our 3D view here. Uh, the preview. So right now, if I go Z and then go to render. You'll see up here, it says the sample is at 10. That's what that is. So if I raise this up to, um, I don't know, let's say 100. You'll, you'll see that up here, um, it rendered out 100 samples now. And you'll see that the scene got a whole lot better also. Um, so if you want this to do a continued render um, all the time, you'll want to set this preview to zero and it'll just render from infinity to beyond so but we'll set this back down to 10 for right now let's see here just go back to auto detect and then what we got post process oops hold on post processing uh this is for let's say if we go to z and we go into the compositor and we're in here and uh, and you'll see that uh, we got our re-render that out. You'll see that we got our render in here in the back. This is the compositor. This is where we take the nodes and do all the, the final compositing and stuff like that. Um, so if I go shift a and I come in and where did that we'll go to color and let's just do a color balance and, uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's ugly. Let's warm the, the image just a tad bit. Just a tad bit. All right. So you'll see that it's the image is just a little bit warmer. You want to take this and make sure it's plugged in to composite. And then if we come back over here and we go back to default and you'll see now if I press F12. You'll see now that it renders with the compositor on there. So if you don't want that to do that, because sometimes it does take a uh, little bit longer, especially if you got a big scene you're rendering, um, you could just untick that and the compositing won't render with this um, and that goes the same for the sequencer and then down here this is bake this is where you bake uh, all your maps so you got normal map uh, environment map your glossy color indirect all this good kind of stuff ambient occlusion and stuff like that this is the bake tab for that and it'll bake on your maps your UVs um, Let's see, let's go in here super quickly. This is your render tab. So this is your layers and this is uh, for render layers. We'll get into this, uh, but this is for if you got multiple things that you want to render on different layers. So say I wanted to just render this cube on one layer and then render everything else on a second layer. This is where we do that here. Uh, we got our scene tab. This is where you come in, you got your color management. 
you got your audio management in here, gravity, custom properties, uh, you can simplify everything, uh, motion tools, that's not something you guys will have. That is a paid add-on, uh, by the way, and I'll get into some of that stuff too, the next tutorial. Uh, you got your world tab. This is uh, where we go to use nodes and I'll press exit to go back to 3D view and I'll press Z and then go to rendered. And you'll see that uh, the background right here, which is this gray color. So if I change this in here to say white, that's what the uh, background will look like. And if you notice, it added more light also. I just turn it, make it back to, to a different color. And this is where you'll come in and you want to add, uh, you could add different shaders and stuff in here to this. Uh, you come in here and you'll want to put your environment texture and stuff, but we'll get into all that. Uh, you got your volume. Uh, you could turn this on if you want for volume absorption or volume scatter. Stuff does work inside of cycles now. Uh, you can turn on ambient occlusion. So you see that brightened everything up too. You turn, change your distance, say to five. Or so, I don't know, 12. You got the factor, I don't know, 10. And you'll see now it's super too much. We'll go back to two. Or where did I have it on? One? Yeah, one. There we go. We'll turn that off. Uh, you got your ray visibility. So uh, you could have it visible to the camera. If not, then it'll just turn uh, black. You don't want that because this turns off the cam the stuff that the camera sees here. So you just want to be careful with that. But you could come in here and you could turn off the diffuse or the glossy. Um, and then you got settings here. And sometimes when you have... Uh, a environment texture and stuff in there and you're getting a bunch of fireflies and stuff just remember come click this important or multiple importance you want to look through all these and just tick them all it'll make your render times longer but if you're going for a super nice image anyways and you're on your final render um it does matter but uh you want the best you can get uh so if we go here to the object data tab and right here, you got your transform and stuff. So if I press Z and then go back to solid and I press N, if I scroll up here, we got transform and everything. We're ticked on this box so we can move that from up here too. Uh, you could also lock this from right here. And you got your transform over here. You can move everything over here in this, uh, these transformation tabs over here in the object data. You got relationships, so you can put them on different layers and stuff like that here. You could add it to a group. You could display the wire, but you can see the wire, turn that on. You turn on the axes. So I don't know if you can see that down there, but it shows you your axes. It show you the name of it. Let's see, it says cube. Um, so this is just what it displays here. Let's drop it back to the ground. All righty. Um, you can, this is the maximum draw type. You change the wire, solid, textured, or bound. Uh, we'll go back to solid, the object color. You have duplication, frames, verts, faces, groups, relative extras, motion paths, uh, your custom properties, motion blur is on, ray visibility. This, like I said, everything has this, so you can make it visible the camera so if i go z rendered now it's not visible to the camera turn it on it is now turn the diffuse off glossy so on and so forth object constraints we'll get into that stuff another time um you got your modifiers so if i added let's say a subsurf modifier put this on two you'll see that now uh Go to Z, Z and you'll see that now the subsurf modifier with, and sometimes it makes it look better, sometimes not. But we'll go ahead and take that off now. 
and we'll go back to tab and we'll turn the moon crease back off tab um you got your uh this is the object data i say object data for everything i don't know why but um anyways you got your normals you could auto smooth them in here you got texture space your vertex groups um i'll show you this more we got shape keys we can make shape keys if we'd like um uh we got uv maps you got your vertex colors geometry data custom properties we'll get into all this stuff here in the next tutorial or two um i know this tutorial right here is running a little bit long now um you got your material tab this is where you go to add uh, materials and textures but like i said if you're not in blender render and you're in cycles Cycles works a little bit differently. Um, you can add, do everything you want here in here and change everything, but it gets a little bit confusing doing it from here unless you're doing something simple. But for more advanced textures, you'll want to grab that little corner, split your view, like I said uh, earlier, and then go to the node editor and you want to do everything inside the node editor. Um, let's see. So we got our textures, we bring up your texture for your uh, brushes and uh, for your displacement modifiers and stuff like that. Um, you got a particle system and we'll get into particle systems here. They're pretty cool. Uh, the, this is where you add like hair. So if I added a new one and change this to hair, you'll see that it's all crazy. Uh, let me go ahead and close that window over there press in so you can see you see that it's all crazy and uh we got hair on this now so you go into your uh other modes particle edit and inside of here you could edit your particles press t to bring that up you bring your comb this is where you comb your particles and stuff but we'll get it we'll get into particles later on particles are pretty cool uh go ahead and delete that though then you got your physics tabs you got your force field your collisions your cloth uh cloth is really nice i really like the cloth dynamic paint i don't use too much um but this is how you come in you make a raindrop effects and stuff like that we'll get into some of that stuff later too soft body uh, fluid the fluid's really nice too um let's see file open uh we'll open um and like i said some of this stuff anyways but this is a fluid sim so if i press z and go into wireframe you'll see that the fluids inside there and press z and go back to solid and or actually go to rendered and you will see uh that the fluid sim is really really super nice and uh you can make some really really cool things with the fluid sim so we'll, go, we'll get out of that um we'll come back over here and uh actually no i'm gonna go ahead and just open a new one um this is how i have my my layout set up most of the time when i'm in cycles but we'll go i just went to new and started up a new site new file and anyways but we got uh your smoke we got Rigid body, rigid body constraints. I think that's all we're going to do for now um, for animation. You got compositing. I'll just run through these again real quick. Your default view, your game logic, which I ran through these the other day, motion tracking, scripting, UV editing, and video editing. So I think the next tutorial, we will be going into those in more detail. And I think that is it for now. Please like and subscribe for tons more tutorials and have a great day. Thank you.